people are buying these GoPro cameras and having a lot of fun recording video, but they get home and they've got all this content and they don't know how to use uh, Final Cut and iMovie's annoying as all get out. Luckily, the people at GoPro have a solution to this, and I'm with Craig Davidson, who's going to tell us about GoPro Studio. Okay, yeah, um, we have Go we've developed GoPro Studio to address some of the issues uh, that people with GoPro cameras have. Primarily, um, people record, a lot of times they just turn the camera on and just let it record forever. So you end up with clips that are hours long. And how Nobody you, wants to watch that. Nobody wants to watch that. You have a couple of minutes in there that you want to find. Oh, I'm going to interrupt you with one other thing I want to make sure people know up front. This is for Mac, Windows, and it's a grand price of free. So now I've got your interest. Okay, yeah, it is free and it's available on the website. Uh, anybody can download it and play with it. Um, and when you first start, you start in step one, uh, interestingly enough, which is view and trim. You bring your, uh, your GoPro footage into here and uh, it, it all appears in a bin on the left and you can import um, from GoPro, you can import either MP4s or JPEGs. And it'll, if you did a time lapse, it'll turn the JPEG sequence into a time lapse video for you automatically. Oh, nice. Um, the new Hero, uh, the Hero 4 has a new feature, uh, which is highlight tag, and you can either you can tag video either with a remote with the iPhone app or uh, by pressing a button on the side of the camera, and then inserts a tag into the video. And um, in view and trim, we actually show the tr clips that have tags, and we'll show uh, a tag on the timeline, so you can say, oh, that's the interesting point. I'll look there first. So for that two-hour uh, mountain bike down Haleakala, then you can find the one spot where you crashed and it was interesting? That's correct. Or you're on the racetrack, and that 20-minute session, you get the part, part where someone hits you. Okay, so view and trim uh, is pretty much what you, what you said. You can, uh, you can scrub through it, you can trim it, and then uh, what do you do next? Uh, okay, then you uh, then you you set an in and out point. Um, you can rotate the image and do a couple of other advanced settings, such as change speed. Um, the rotate image is good for when you've mounted it upside down on your dog. Correct, either upside down on your dog, or I've mounted it upside down on my bike, uh, just hanging it from the head. So it doesn't have to be a dog. Good to know. Right, that's right. So if you've mounted it upside down, you can and didn't flip it in the camera, you can flip it here. Um, and then once you, once you've done the trim. Um, it will create an intermediate file, which, which then you, you use in the edit room. The edit room has a similar setup. You have So this bin on the left is not the same bin. These are the edit ones that have been edited? These are the ones that have been trimmed. trimmed. These are the okay. trimmed. And this is actually a media bin uh, for your edit. You have video, you can have titles, and you can also pull in uh, music from your, uh, from your iTunes uh, folder you know, if you want to put music in your video. Um, so now we have what looks to be more of a traditional timeline. Uh, you call it a storyboard down here at the bottom? Uh, that's correct. Uh, we call it a storyboard. It looks like a timeline, uh, but the difference is is that the each time you drag a clip down there, um, it takes the same amount of space on the storyboard, and it just changes the speed in which it plays. So if you have a long clip, it'll play slowly through through the thumbnail. If you have a short clip, it plays pretty quickly. Oh, I see why you don't call it a timeline now. Yeah, I got it. I got you. Speeding up there. Um, and the editor actually has some couple of really nice features. Um, in addition to the uh, the normal uh, adjusting the view, adjusting um, the speed, um, it doesn't really depend. It you don't have to set the resolution of your timeline of your movie when you start editing. So if you bring in two different clips from two different resolutions, what happens? Um, it will actually uh, set the timeline resolution to the most most common by time, the most common resolution. So if I've got a whole bunch of clips that are, are uh, 4K and then one clip that's 1080p, it'll do what to the 1080p? Uh, it'll scale up the 1080p to 4K. Uh, and, and vice versa, right? Yeah, and vice versa. If you have a lot of 1080p and you're bringing a 4K, it, it will scale that down. That's really cool. It does that intelligently. Yeah, and it has uh, it does that intelligently, so you don't have to worry about it. And then when you export, you can decide to export at 4K or 1080 or whatever. It will actually tell you uh, the maximum for your timeline. Um, it also has a speed change ability, and in this clip here, we have a snowboarder going over the edge of a uh, of a pipe, and so we've we've stopped right as the snowboard's at the top of the pipe. We uh, split the clip and then go over to where it's coming back down, split the clip again, and then take the middle clip, and we can change the speed, and you can slow down the speed. So you can actively make slow-mo video right in the middle of the clip? 
Oh, that's correct. So you make a slow mo video, and then as it plays, when you're in the editor viewing it, it just plays the frame slower. So it's a little bit, it it stutters, it stutters a little bit. Uh, but when you export it, we, it uses a feature we call called flux to. Uh, generate the, the frames in between, uh, so you get a nice smooth slow motion effect. I don't think you can do that in Final Cut, can you? Steve shaking his head, says not easily. Not easily, that usually takes a plug-in to do that, uh, but we build it in here because that slow motion effect is one of the things uh, people really like about uh, GoPro videos. That is really, really slick. I, I'm watching you do this and this looks completely intuitive to me. Yeah, uh, we we hoped it is. We spent a lot of we spent some time designing it. Um, we're always working on things to trying to make it uh, easier to easier to use. Um, so oh, I, go ahead. We also have these presets. So um, what we can do with presets, we can actually change the color very easily. So there's like fil filters, like an Instagram kind of thing. Correct. Yeah, they're like uh, Instagram filters. Yeah, I hate those. Yeah. So <laughs> you can have these, these kids today. They like them. Yeah, they like them, but there are a number of them. So day for night, and 1970s look, so your film's all old. Um, and you can also create your own if you want. Oh, cool. Kind of also on the right-hand side, he's got uh, things where he can change the white balance, temperature tint, exposure, contrast, saturation, sharpness, keyframes, a whole lot of other controls there. This is, this is really, really slick. I still can't believe this is free. I mean, you're sure it's free? Yep, it is free. There is no trick. Sure now, the final step is export. Anything interesting on step three? Um, well, with an export, you have a, a number of choices. For instance, well, if, you, if you've uh, actually done a speed change, it actually gives you the op that's where it gives you the option to apply flux uh, to smooth it out. So the flux capacitor, you do yeah, that, right? The flux capacitor, speed, uh, speed changing. It does take a lot of CPU, and so it takes a long time to export with flux. So we warn you. Um, they're it's doing a lot of math. It's interpolating between the frames, right? That's correct. Give it a minute. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there, the, just some presets for the modes. Um, and you can always do a custom mode. In the custom mode, you can choose between H.264 or the GoPro Cineform codec um, frame rate quality. Wow, Craig, this is, this is fantastic. I especially appreciate the fact that Craig actually did this entire interview twice. I want to thank you for your time. This is fantastic. Where does somebody find this? Okay, it's, uh, the software is found on the GoPro website uh, under Products Software. All right, fantastic. And what was it called again? It's called GoPro Studio. All right, thanks again, Craig. Okay, thank you.